Welcome back to Winning at Work. It's season three, the podcast for the food and beverage and CPG world. I'm Jennifer Lee, Tony's new marketing sidekick and creative guru. I'll attempt to keep him on track as we discover the ideas and strategies behind all these different, better, and special brands. Oh, good luck keeping me on track, but I am really stoked to have you on the team, Jennifer. Your background in marketing and SEO and socials, we are going to have so much fun this year. We're going to be discovering the new brands here in 2023. It's all about functional, good for you, lifestyle brands. Those are trending. Those are the products that are gaining market share and really pulling away from those old legacy brands. We're going to have each and every one of those brands down on the podcast to talk to us, to share their ideas, their inspiration. So you, the entrepreneur, so you, the food and beverage and CPG professional can take these new ideas in and incorporate them into your business and into your life. Oh my gosh, Tony, I'm seriously so excited. I feel like I learn so much just from listening to older episodes. Well, that's why we're here. And if this is your first time here, I would recommend, look, go back, take the five episode challenge, pick a brand, pick a CEO, an entrepreneur, dive in, listen to what it is that they're teaching us. If you love the content, subscribe. We hope you're along with us for the journey each and every week. By the way, do you have a favorite brand in your market you would love for us to amplify on this national platform? Reach out to us on LinkedIn and stay tuned for this week's episode. Hey, it's Jennifer. We get it. Everyone hates hiring. Inspired by his guests, Tony created a novel talent acquisition program that attracts the hidden candidate market, the 70% of people that are not actively applying to jobs. Click on the attract link in the show notes to watch a demo. Welcome, everybody, to Winning at Work. I have my favorite lifestyle brands PR expert with me today. Matt, how are you, sir? Doing great. Thanks again for having me uh, co-host on these things. You just get the easy end of this every single time. You get to show up, drop the wisdom, and leave me to do all the work. All the editing, all the recording, everything. The promoting, I just sit back and relax. (laughs) Well, you know, I've been thinking more about the rise of lifestyle brands. What is it about lifestyle brands that people are drawn to and you have a whole agency built around lifestyle brands? Just what what is it about that? You know, I think you're seeing more and more that, uh, you know, through the years that people want to have brands that they can really call their own. So you have that badge value, you know, as as the uh, rise of these types of things. You don't want to have, you know, what your father had, your grandfather had. You want to really be able to have a, a brand that has a story. And then you can share that knowledge in, uh, you know, with your peers, with other people. And then when you're seen with it or, or using it or utilizing it, it really tells something about you. And I think that's a big part of when you think of even with social media and just how people you know, really share what they're thinking about or what, you know, how they're faking it in the world. The, the brands really can help carry that message. This is that interesting that it, it's actually like part of your self-identification. Yeah, totally. And I think that especially now, and I think this is why it's really interesting within you know, obviously the, the box water uh, community, that tells an even deeper narrative that you're talking about that you, uh, you, you understand the, uh, you know, how plastic is bad with water. You understand the uh, problem with recycling. You know, you have a, a feeling about it and it really is able to, you know, communicate that in a way that, you know, you're talking without talking. So I, I think that's a big part ah. of what, what people see with the brand. And also, you know, you look at the, um, you know, the people that carry it and, and those elements, and that'll be interesting to to talk to Rob about as to how, you know, from a, a selling standpoint, how that, uh, you know, baton is really carried over. And I think that's a big part when we look at, you know, other brands, obviously, but really what story they can bring to the user. Well, you know, as I was preparing to speak with Rob Conan, he's the chief revenue officer of Box Water, which started back in 2009. You know, it really kind of forced me to look a little deeper into plastic. And I'm really looking forward to talking to you today, Rob. Welcome in. Hi, Matt. Hi, Tony. How are you? How's life up in Michigan treating you? Michigan's awesome. Although we just we got 17 inches of snow in 48 hours, uh, so we're still we're still digging out up here. Plenty of fresh water <laughs> up there yeah, for your yeah. product. It's the circle of life. Yes, it is. Uh, there's some incredible documentaries on the Great Lakes. I recommend everyone look at those. It's really 
fasc- uh, fascinating. I think it's great that you guys are tapping into Lake Michigan as well for the East Coast of your business. But I'm really, um, I'm really curious just about the work you're doing to combat plastic. And yeah. people just don't understand, or maybe they do, just how bad this problem is. Just how big is this industry, would you say, this plastic industry? Oh, well, the plastic industry, if you if you take everything, is, is billions and billions of dollars. I mean, if you just look at – so I'll drill down to just the single-use plastic. Um, there's 69 billion bottles made just in the United States every year. And less than 20 percent of them are getting recycled. And, and that's after 50 years of us talking about recycling, doing recycling. I, I will say so it's huge. I mean, over nine million tons go in the ocean because, uh, like I said, less than 20, 25 percent is getting recycled. So nine million tons goes in the ocean or landfills. It takes 700 years approximately for it to break down. Think about that. And think, think and, about well, that. How quickly do you drink? Uh, a fin- you know, crush a little bottled water, right? You could exactly, right? That, that's what I, the math doesn't add up. It takes twelve minutes to drink a, a bottle of water on average. It lasts for seven hundred years. So, I mean, I always say plastic is good for some things that, that last that last a long time, but something that doesn't last twelve minutes, uh, that lasts twelve minutes, but takes uh, seven hundred years. And just to put it in perspective, like if Leonardo da Vinci drank a bottle of water while painting the Mona Lisa. That would still be around today, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that really know. does put it. <clears throat> that really does put it in perspective. And you think about you know the small percentage that actually gets reused. I really love the direction that you're going in with box water. You've got this eight step purification process to get you know the cleanest, crispest tasting water. I see mm-hmm. your cartons are made from 100 percent recyclable materials, 92 percent are plant-based, which is another great way to use, you know, plant-based and be part of that movement. But the big thing is that there's no BPA toxins, which, right, I mean, everyone wants to get rid of that. And I Mm -hmm. love that it can be reused and refilled over and over. So I feel like it's really hitting a very important need that we have in society to find a way to get rid of this uh, plastic. I love. I, I see you've been to our website. So. <laughs> this this is a subject that I'm really interested in because it really bothers me. I mean, I know the same with you, Matt. I mean, there's just yeah. we are we are inundated with plastic. I hate knowing that it's there is no away. There, you don't throw it away. And right. through over the, you know, the with the pandemic and, and Rob, I know we'll touch on this, but you know, there really there was the increase of plastics. You know, when everyone started to freak out and you had, you know, everyone separating and, and not using any of the, um, you know, communal waters, any of that stuff, it became much more of a, uh, increase where there was a little bit, you know, minute, you know, decrease of, of plastics, but then now it's just even, you know, uh, skyrocketed of everyone really needing it and wanting it. And, you know, it, it really is something to take yeah. home food. I mean, it, it just explode. Yeah. I mean, it was, it eventually ended up helping the food business, the, you know, food service, but the, 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 yeah. the downside of that obviously just was the, you know, incredible take home. Um, well, the, the, over, the overall recycling rate for, for not just for single use, but for all plastic actually dropped over the last 12 months. Reuters announced that the rate used to be 8% and it's dropped to 4.7%. So again, ninety-five percent of plastic is not being recycled right now, um, which is which is mind-boggling when you think about all the time and effort that's put into it. And you bring up the plastic industry. I mean, that's that's really there's a lot of misinformation that's sent out there, and you've got companies that are spending billions of dollars to talk about that plastic is good or that it is recyclable, and it is. It's just not happening. It's like saying. War is bad, so we don't need guns. You're, you're right. If, if, if we didn't have war, we wouldn't need guns. But the fact of the matter is, is that is that we're not recycling. So we need. So I guess at the end of the day, recycling is not enough. We need to be thinking about sustainability and 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 picking things that don't that aren't plastic that that don't hurt the planet. That's what um, was so fascinating in that study because I think I was looking at something similar to you, is that. We've been taught, well, just throw all your plastics in the recycling bin. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to sort every single unique piece of plastic to put them into like categories. Um, I thought you could just melt it all down, but apparently you can't. Every piece of plastic has to be with its own um, 
threshold levels yep. to be it's melted both. down. And when it's all, oh. so that's the problem. That's the problem. Supply and demand is a problem. I mean, the more we use, it's it's basic supply and demand. The more that's out there, the lower uh, you the cost is for the, that the um, the recycler can get for it. So so all of a sudden it stops being um, profitable. I've talked to a number of of recyclers and waste companies who said, yeah, we just don't take plastic anymore because it doesn't pay for it anymore. So you know, Rob, it looks like you guys are really the right product for the problem. I mean, everyone wants water and you now have this solution. And, you know, Matt, I'd love you to just kind of help us understand, you know, how this fits into the lifestyle category and the trends that you're now seeing with this box water. Yeah. And I think, and Rob, I'll tee it up for you, but I think the the bigger thing is really when you look at um, the deeper narrative within the brand. So yes, you know, and even they, you know, the having boxed water, having plastic water, having water on the go, Again, 50 years, 100 years ago, was you could drink from you know the rivers, the fountains. You know you had this uh, you know element, and hydration has become such a big part of the lifestyle. And people talk about you know the the need case of, of hydration. And by by having this product, I'm always curious how you go in and sell this. You know because it is you're selling iced Eskimos. You're selling you know you come in from be it hospitality, hotels, even retail. How that is a, a discussion point because it, you. You're coming in, it's a little bit of a square peg and round hole because I think sometimes from we've seen, even with media, they don't know how to sort of interact with you or understand, again, why, why would I carry you versus, you know, a, a different brand? Yeah, no, I, it's it's a good point. We've been around for 13 years, uh, so we've learned a lot uh, and we're a disruptor brand taking on the taking on the industry. Um, so some of the things we did, I mean, obviously, we, we the product itself as you mentioned, Tony is fantastic. It's, it's, it's got an eight step reverse osmosis process along with some other areas to make it perfectly pure. And it's won awards for its taste and its purity. And if you didn't have good product, it wouldn't, it wouldn't mean anything. Um, but, but what differentiates us is that we do have the most sustainable packaging on the market. We've got even the cap is made from a renewable resource. Everything is is derived from a tree in some in some sorts. 92% of it is. Um, so we we obviously tout the, the 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 aspects of the product, but what we've been able to do and what helps us compete is to create that kind of status symbol um, feeling about us. Our product is looks unique. It stands out on the shelf. Uh, it's a white carton um, and I consider us Fiji without the guilt. We have partnered ourselves <laughs> with, I know, it's, it, but we've partnered, our, and everybody gets that because that is a lifestyle brand, right? So that has a status symbol, that has a cachet. This has that same luxury cachet, but we've also gift with purchase layered on the fact that we don't, you know, we don't add to the pollution problem. Uh, and so that's how we position ourselves. And it's it's positioning ourselves in a couple different ways. First, obviously, as a premium brand, as the premium brand, the original. Um, but also, so we've partnered with with key like minded companies and individuals who feel the same way. So we're now the official water on Alaska Airlines. Uh, we just we just announced that we'll be coming out with Jurassic Park and we'll be in all the universal parks uh, coming out in 2023. We're with SoulCycle. You know, all these areas, all these touch points that are premium touch points and then hotels up and down the line where consumers are seeing us at a Four Seasons and obviously realizing, hey, this is something special because I'm staying in a special place. And we leverage off of that um, that halo effect where people go, there is something premium here. And not to mention, we, we have a lot of celebrities who, who we don't sponsor celebrities at all, but they gravitate to us because of our mission. And they've gravitated to us because we're authentic. And so you do get the Kardashians posting. You do get Ellen DeGeneres, you know, using us on our show. It's, it's very rewarding when you see, uh, especially celebrities who are used to getting paid to promote something, to promote something strictly because because it's the right thing to do. Um, I love that you're thing- positioned as a premium brand, so naturally you look for premium partners. Right. 
Right. We always talk about there's a price point for everything. Right. And I, I, I always say, you know, we're Mercedes, BMW. We're not, you know, the Kia of the world. You go. I thought you were going to say you go. You, you needed to sure. date yourself. <laughs> I you know, and you could date yourself because I did not give you a proper introduction. I mean, I literally have one of the VPs on from Rollerblade, for God's sakes. <laughs> Come on, this was a 90s throwback. Talk about a lifestyle brand. You couldn't go anywhere in the parks and not see someone wearing a pair of Rollerblades. So, with their, yeah. yeah, with their neon, your neon joggers and everything. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You, uh, you've definitely been in the space for consumer and consumer trends and products. So I think you're the right guy at the helm. I just, I had to give a shout out to a rollerblade. I hadn't seen that in a while. Did you skate? Did you skate? Yes, when of you course were I did. Were you, so were you hockey or were you, were you aggressive skating? Like were you a street skater? I was just a street skater. Right. I just picked them That's- up and said, this is awesome. And we would go into the parks and we would literally find barrels and things that we could jump. And we were just. That's- crazy when i met my wife she was i was deep into that and she was just like i don't know how you do it well i'll tell you it's coming back i've talked to a lot of the younger kids and i still have friends rollerblades still around believe it or not and i still have friends there and they're like you wouldn't believe it but it is definitely on the on the upswing again there you go it's making everything old, everything old is there new there you again. go there you go well except for, um except for I, I'm, I'm great at derailing conversations matt so get us back but so, but we partnered with Matt because because he is so. The, so his organization is Blaze, um, the public relations group that we partner with for now going on I think three years, and the, and they are phenomenal at putting together the message because because I've got you know fifty different things I could talk about from BPA to tree plantings, and and part of the job here is to get a consumer's attention. This is not this is not a high. Uh, a high involvement category. People aren't, you know, researching what water am I going to drink? It's usually what's, what's available. So, so the, so I'm actually going to throw it back to Matt and say, Matt, what, what have you found is the best way to break through the noise uh, when you do have, I mean, this is an important message um, to get it on people's radars. Yeah. I think, you know, you look at it from where we are as a planet and as even a society, and even if you boil it down into the United States, People, you know, as they go about their day, they see pollution, plastic, garbage everywhere. And we try and, to your point, we can go a lot of different ways. And I think the the whole plastic issue, people have started to realize and understand. And there's that guilt. We try and play into the uh, the guilt through, you know, via media, via reporters to understand it. And then dig deeper on that narrative of, you know, a lot of the elements of, you know, how long it takes for a plastic bottle to break down or if it ever breaks down. You know, a lot of people just, to your point, Tony, you know, magically think, oh, I, you just, you know, melt it and it's a new bottle. You know, that's a lot of those uh, myths that the uh, aluminum and plastic industries try and get people to think that it comes back magically. But knowing that it just becomes this globular thing that just, you know, will always be around. And I think we try and do that as well as when you look at it, you know, we can be geotargeted and say, okay, walk up and down any coast, it's in our oceans and the microplastics. And, you know, there's a lot of the science that really, you know, that can be more of the dark green that, you know, is there to scare people. We can come in and, and you know, maybe be a little more light green and tell that story and say there's better choices, there's better things you need. And as, you know, it, it's really the parallel where the box water brand's been going, where you're seeing it in more places. You know, when we first started, it was still almost just the direct consumer brand. You know, everyone it was like, oh, I got to subscribe, I got to get stuff shipped to me. Or I might have seen it one, you know, one box at a at a hotel, but now you're able to say, okay, you're going to see it at CVS, you know, every summer during water season, and you're going to have it, you know, on your Alaska airline. There's so many, you know, friends of the agency and just people we know that'll just send a picture to us, like, hey, I saw this. And like again, we've been we live it every day with Alaska Airlines, but you know, they're so excited to see it, and then also being able to share it for a lot of the, you know, uh, even markets where they're not thinking about it as much. You know, if it is, you know, the oceans, we we sort of live it every day, but you're able to tell that story. And it becomes a, a bigger, you know, uh, uh, element because there's a lot of those things, you know, we have um, a, a scientist we work with and he talks about as a society, especially in the United States, that we ingest a credit card amount of plastic each week. What? Through our, food, through, our through all ingesting, you know, all the, the plastic That's disgusting. That around. Once a right. week, I'm eating a credit card? A credit card, yeah. That, you know, through the, you know. You Is it a Visa? It Is it an Amex? What am I? <laughs> it's a black card. It's kind a black of a, Amex. Am I getting any points yeah. back? Am I getting yeah, any are. benefits? Exactly. And I think that's what we try and really bring across. And I think that the other thing, and Rob touched on it, but the great thing too about Box Water is the people internally. 
like it is, it is a, you know, unified front within the whole organization from the sales guys to, you know, the, the different marketing teams that we deal with that are really, you know, you're carrying the, the flag and the banner every day because that's, yeah. you, and you can, you can't give up because it's, we get, you know, two steps forward. We can't, you can't say, okay, cool. We got this partnership. We can coach for a little bit. It's really built those building blocks that can really, you know, compete. And also, you know, in, in many ways, we're trying to defeat big plastic. And I love one of the things you say all the time is you know, the goal. One of the missions is to be great if the company went away, if eventually we, you know, yeah. that if we, everyone had, you know, the, um, the back to just water, you didn't need plastic bottles anymore. Yeah, no. It, so we actually say box water is better for a reason. We, we, we don't say box water is the best because refillable is the best. When you're, when you're at home, use your Brita, refill your water. When you're on the road, use a swell bottle. I, I mean, honest to gosh, we, we talk, we joke about being out of, out of a job, but we are definitely a better, a better alternative to plastic bottles and even aluminum cans. Um, when you think about it, I mean, like, like you said, the, the bottles, so I say it takes 700 years to break down. It never really breaks down. It never is it's not biodegradable. It doesn't go back into the earth. And so that's where the microplastics come into play and fish and animal and wildlife eat it. And then it becomes part of our diet. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, we are definitely better than that. And then Matt brought it up and I, I wanted to just touch on it because I'm excited that at least plastic pollution has become part of the social conversation, especially we've done research. If you're under if you're under 40 years old, people realize there's a big plastic problem and they're willing. Actually, I've talked to talk to younger people. I heck no, I won't even say that. I, I've had um, brands come to me um, like DVF. They hand out water at their stores and they said handing out a plastic bottle is like handing somebody a pack of cigarettes these days. People literally recoil mm -hmm. and say, don't don't give me that. I don't want to waste that. So so we've come a long way in the last five years with plastic. And, and I the, the same conversation has to be had about aluminum cans, because aluminum is is just as bad, if not worse than plastic, as far as the, the extraction and the production of these cans um, requires far more of an impact on the earth as far as carbon footprint um, the amount of energy that's 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 done to smelt and to and to mine these things, uh, as well as the amount of land that is just destroyed because you're clear cutting and then you're mining all of this product. So so it goes back to what Matt was saying. We we've, we've got to be able to educate, point these things out in a in a bite sized way because and in a positive way because there is an alternative. Uh, you don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but at the same time, you need to get this information out to people because they do care. How about in the uh, when you look at it from again back to the sales side? Because it, and again, you're the chief revenue officer and the chief marketing officer, so you wear these hats and yeah. look at it that way. But you know, when you go in and, and try and tell this story to a, a hotel, how do you get them thinking about it? But then on the flip side, you know, you guys have to go after retail now. And if you look at yeah. you know, where the growth can be. How does that message and story change within that? No, well, it's a good question. I mean, so there's there's a number of approaches, and first comes comes down to the consumer. So when you go to when you go to a hotel, you you talk about the fact that you know your consumers, if you're in if you're in certain hotels, you know they're going to be driving up with a Tesla. You know they're going to you know that this is important to them, um, and and frankly. I have to do less selling now than I used to because a number of, of, of brands are announcing like four seasons said they're going to walk away from plastic bottles. Not everything starts with the consumer. It's because their consumers are looking for, for a change. They, they realize the amount of waste that goes in. Um, same thing when I, when you talk to retail, when you talk to retail, you have, you have to talk about the fact that this is a growing category. I mean, we've got more entrants now than we ever had, uh, and that's again not by accident. It, it, it's because the consumer is voting with their wallet, and and yeah, it's probably you know ninety five percent plastic and five percent, but it but that five percent is growing, um, and it's also offering an alternative to your customers uh, and making sure that they see that. The the other thing that we do that that resonates with both is. Um, one of the things we started about four or five years ago is just an easy campaign of if you post a picture of our box, we'll plant two trees in the National Forest. So we partnered with the National Forest Foundation. Um, and that is something where where we say, you know, 
I said earlier, we don't pay celebrities. We, we consider the trees are our celebrities. So we've taken to heart the reforestation efforts around this um, completely for free. We, we actually decided to do that because we didn't have broad distribution. So if we were at, if we were at a, an event like a Lollapalooza or if we were at um, a different um, marathon, people could just take pictures right there. They didn't have to go and try to find it and buy it. Now, now you can find it online. I haven't put my sales hat on. Now you can see it at, find it at CVS and, any, and, and most major brands. Um, but back then, all you had to do is take a picture and we post two trees. We plant two trees. Uh, fast forward to now, we're over 1.5 million trees planted. And, and what's beautiful about it is that we've built this, um, this community on, on social media. We have over 100,000 followers uh, between, uh, on Facebook and, and Instagram and whatnot. And you, you find this community of, of people, of both you know, parents teaching their kids about reforestation and sustainability. You have artists doing incredible things with their posts. I mean, it is made out of paper, so you can draw and do a lot of artistic things on this. So we built this community. We have this huge following. And that is not only good for, for us, because it is a, a lot of people who believe in the brand, but it's also something you take to, back to your question, Matt, you take to the retailer and say, look, compare us to other brands. You know, for a water brand to have over a hundred thousand, or or when we launched with uh with 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 Alaska Air to have over a million followers and and the highest engagement rate of any any one of their things, that's something you can physically and quantitatively say there is uh, a tsunami of interest in this. You you should be part of this movement. Rob, I have a question. Um, I know in the retail space some. Some food items, some categories are considered basket builders. Others are considered inspirational or add-ons. Where does water fall in the kind of shopper psyche when they're going to the store? That's a great question. And it actually surprised me when we talked to a couple of our partners who measure that. We're a basket builder. We have, I, I, I couldn't believe it that, that um, our rings, rings uh, that have our product in it, um, if I remember correctly, we're 10 to 15 percent higher um, and also had more variety. So you're seeing people with more of, who pick more of an assortment pick our water. Now, do you use the store locator? I don't know if you have a store locator. Do you, do you have that feature? Yep. Yep, that's at www.boxwater.com. We have, okay, so we that have a is store there. Do you use that data when you go talk to a buyer uh, that – Here's how much we're being searched, and it's coming up in your zip code, and there's not the coverage there. Does that? Can you kind of use that data as a as a to triangulate? Mm-hmm. Yes. So we use that. Well, the first the first line of defense is is just um, we have a very robust web store uh, business, e commerce business, both both on second party as well as our own, and we can trace that. So. We've gone to a number of, of retail distributors and then retailers to say, I mean, Austin is a great example. It is always in our top five. Um, and we are just we've just started building our business there in um, in brick and mortar. And one of the things we do is we bring them this and say, look what we have. Look what we have. We've also just we also tie in our promotions with some of our partners. So we just did a Lululemon marathon down down there. And so. We can we can bring to bear a lot of these brands that we work with in order to help, again, drive awareness and available near you. And you, and you can call out the particular uh, retailer that you're partnering with on, on many of these events. So you started um, DTC thing, and now you're expanding retail brick and mortar. Yeah. And then the other thing that we've done, which is interesting, is is um, is because we have such a huge following. Um, we leverage that and say, you know, we will call out. We did a, a CVS post earlier this year and we'll do more of them saying, hey, look, and that actually one of our some of our best performing posts are kind of where to find posts because consumers are always wondering where where can I find you? So the CVS posts we do on a regular basis because that's something that that consumers want to see. And and again, I, I, I like to think it, it's it's making the uh, Walgreens guys a little bit jealous. Yeah, those are the two big boys on the block for sure. They put Rite Aid out of business. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I think having the right message and and then having all these partners, and then speaking of partners, like I said, next year is going to be um, th- this. This year was a fairly easy sell 
you know, it, like anything's easy given this climate. But tying in the Jurassic Park collectible cartons um, is just the natural um, layup for a retailer. So we're going to have we're going to we're, we're coming out with um, six different collectible. It's going to have the dinosaurs um, on the box, along with our brand, obviously. Um, and it's going to be, you know, a collect all six. And gosh, Jurassic Park, I didn't realize is like the third largest franchise in, in, in franchise in all in all of entertainment. Yeah. And so so and it's going to celebrate its 30th year anniversary. So that. You know, when you get down and dirty with a grocery, with a with a retailer on that, that that's an easy conversation to have because you're going to see an uptick in sell through just based on the power of Jurassic. I can't believe that thirty years. By the way, I just went to go see Avatar oh. two after yeah. waiting. Tw- it? It's again visually stunning. Um, I thought it was it's fantastic. You know, of course now they've got, they've got kids. It was just a great um, great experience. But in sitting in the theater ahead of time, they were talking about. They're bringing back the classic movies into the theaters, and they showed like Gone with the Wind. I think they showed oh. um, some Doris Day movie. I forget what it was, and then they showed Jurassic Park. <laughs> I thought, yeah. wait a minute, that's a classic. I mean, it's funny. Yeah, man. it's a fun. It's, but it yeah. is. But it's like it's only thirty years old. But but that's cool. <laughs> no, you have to come to grips with your age at some point. I Never. remember when I was a listen. Ver- first of all. We never discuss age on this. We, <laughs> cardinal rule. No one knows. This is this is why it's an audio podcast. They hear the voice and they think oh. they go, these guys are in their twenties. Dude, you just you brought up rollerblade. <laughs> <laughs> you work there. <laughs> okay, so I'm the old one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a wee little thing when I put them on. <laughs> no, so but was it cool? Did you see it in 3D? No, I we didn't do the 3D. Okay, because I've heard that on the Today Show again. I'm old, so I watch the Today Show. Um, they said they said so. You might want to go back. They said it's it's visually yeah. off the chart. Yeah, the three D glasses. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's good. I definitely I definitely recommend it. And I think it's great that you've got this partnership. Um, so Matt, there's some Rob, other things happening yeah. too. Right? Rob, how important you know when you look at the brand and obviously you're plodding along flavors. How important was the the flavors introduction? And is that a customer request? Was it a you know a, a retailer request? How did you know the yeah. flavor aspect come in? Yeah, no, thank you. That's that's a good point. We extended our range. So, like I said, we've been around for thirteen years, um, and frankly, we've had requests all thirteen years. Of, Can you add flavors? Can you add flavors? And frankly, we felt like we we bided our time. Um, to get to a point where, again, plastic pollution was part of the social fabric, where people knew what the problem was. Our, our whole first, gosh, 10 years was literally education and awareness, just slow and methodical of, of why, why, why cartons are better than plastic bottles or aluminum cans. Um, and so finally, we got to the tipping point about two years ago where we realized that that our business is, is, is succeeding. Retailers are giving us more and more shelf space. And so we finally said this is the time for us to extend our um, our range to include more flavors and, and frankly, be able to be in more um, situations. So it comes down to the consumer having more choices. Like, you know, Henry Ford, you can have any color as long as it's black. Uh, we finally we finally went the Chrysler model and started offering different colors. So we have we have blackberry, we have lemon, we have cucumber, and we have grapefruit flavors. They've been just they just sell out every time every time we make them. Um, we're, they're available online, obviously, and then they're available at, at uh, selected retailers. The one that have that have picked them up, and it's cool because um, we monitor the different flavors that are that are successful. Um, and, and it seems like between cucumber and blackberry, blackberry is like a sweet dessert. And then cucumber is something that's a little more as a spa and more of a health feel to it. But those are the top flavors that seem to be, seem to be resonating. How's grapefruit with doing? Grapefruit's great. It's weird. Grapefruit's, uh, is a, is a close third. Lemon is fourth. And we figure that's because most people are already trained to put lemon in their water. So they're not going to buy lemon water. They right. It's not as uh, novel as a, you know, yeah. a blackberry or cucumber. But what we're hearing on social media, what people are saying is that with the advent in the, uh, of, of the mocktail, that this is a great way to put together a, a mocktail. 
Um, you put some carbonated beverage, beverage in there with the blackberry and a couple other flavors. Um, so we've actually started putting together a little recipe book online and posting that uh, on different ways you can jazz up jazz up your evenings without without having to go down the alcohol. Well, Rob, maybe you're going to need some uh, mocktails because <laughs> uh, you have no idea what you're in for now. This is Tony's Uh-oh. favorite part. This is called rapid fire. So oh my we God. throw uh, a handful of questions at you and, and see how well you can react. So edit, edit, edit. No, exactly. Everyone thinks we're going to edit it. And this is no. not a chance. This uh, is what people have waited for is the hot seat. Yes. As What's he drinks the, another uh, yeah, exactly. shot of uh, box water. What's the topic? Is the it's, topic it's all over? over. It's, this is, and you're good at this stuff. I, you'll be able to, this is like Trivial Pursuit. Theodore Roosevelt. What's the best hundred dollars you spent recently, and why? The best hundred dollars? Yes. Uh, I don't spend a hundred dollars. Um, well, the best hundred dollars <laughs> is he burns, no, is he's burning hundreds just with his cigar. <laughs> no, well, I'll tell you from a work perspective. Um, anything. I send anything. out a few, a few a few hundred dollar gifts gift certificates uh, every week. We have or every two weeks we have a an all company meeting where sales and marketing come together. And one of the parts of it is sharing best practices. So we had, for example, so we, and we, and the door is open for anybody to say, it can be a big thing. It can be a little thing. So we had four people that, that actually did something phenomenal. One of our reps who live in Tampa had to drive all the way to Orlando three times to fix their, um, there was a hotel that was carrying our water and, and they, our box did not fit into the slide rail that they had. So the people were just crushing it and putting it in there. And we looked, we looked, we looked terrible. So, so this young guy out of his way, didn't have to do it. He, he looked it up online. He bought a new slide rail. He brought it up. He first, he talked to them. He met them. He saw the, saw the issue. They were open to him fixing the issue. And then he did this. And this is like three hour drive back and forth. So heck, I gave him a hundred dollar gift certificate and we, it, it basically pays for his gas. Um, uh, in order, so that's the best hundred dollars. The best hundred dollars I think I've spent in a long time. All right, what's a trend that excites you as we go into twenty twenty three? Well, heck, I mean, plastic pollution. People, people realizing that it's uh, that it's it's coming down the pike. I actually the real trend because I spend a lot of time with sustainability experts. The real trend is is going to be when aluminum comes and has to meet its maker when when people start talking about aluminum is as bad as plastic that that i see as a big as a big trend coming down the pike all right tell us something that almost no one agrees with you on oh my god uh, <laughs> you can't say the packers uh, no i was gonna say well the packers are awesome so everyone agrees everyone oh, agrees that the packers, are, packers are really america's team and and uh Frankly, coming out of last night's win, we have a twelve percent chance of twelve uh, percent chance, and I'll take that twelve percent any time. Um, but no, there's there's that. I think. Well, what my my team, most of my team is under the age of thirty five, um, and we have movie trivia di- uh, weeks, and 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 I would say most most of them do not agree that like White Christmas, It's a Wonderful Life. Are phenomenal movies that everybody should be watching every Christmas. They 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 would rather be watching Elf and the more modern ones. That's a good one. I like that. You're very topical. Uh, uh, what advice would you give your younger self? Uh, eat right and exercise a lot, That's and stop and one. lay off the pizza and the brats because it's going to because it's going to catch up. <laughs> All right, and the last one, which I know you'll take probably about an hour to walk through. What is your favorite quote and why? Oh my gosh! You 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 oh. drop quotes like at the drop of a hat. Yes, um, I got a bunch of them. Uh, I was just I was actually just going through quotes from George Washington earlier today. But no, I so um, persistence breaks down resistance is probably my my favorite because in everything that you do, if you if you there is no finish line, you just keep going at it and you slowly. Um, um, go through and, 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 and as long as you keep going at it, you are going to get positive results. And that's what I found through my whole life. The other one would be like, um, 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 wait, why am I having a blank? (laughs) It's like, Oh, you're only as good as your reputation. Um, 
that's the other thing you want when you get to be older, you want to you want to make friends and build a reputation of who you are, because you want to be the person when they when you call an old workmate, when you call somebody that you want help, you want them to pick up the phone. And I've had a lot of conversations with younger people who said, you know, you always got to leave people wanting, you know, with a good good idea that this is a guy who comes through with what he's trying to do. Um, he's, he's always there for me and he'll go the extra mile for me because you never know when you're going to need their help. And, and if you've got a great reputation and then I've, that obviously your great reputation then transcends into the, into the brand, your brand, having a great reputation, people will trust you. And so I always say giraffes hang with giraffes in the sense of you, you surround yourself with great people and great things happen. Um, and the more you build your reputation, the more really good people are going to want, want to spend time with you. That's a great way to finish. All right. I think. Come on, give me more. Good stuff. Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, exactly. Who's president. your favorite president? Not everybody would agree with that, but Teddy Roosevelt's the best president out there. It's not Abraham Lincoln. Everyone thinks it's Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, why? tell us why. Why is Teddy Roosevelt the best? Well, I mean, come on. The, 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 his list of accomplishments is is – it just, it, 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 it um, I mean, it he dwarfs. started the I mean, whole, uh, so, okay, so he's okay. I'll give you the obscure yeah. ones. I mean, obviously he started the, the national right, parks. Right. Um, I mean, he overcame, you know, he was supposed to die as a child. He was the youngest governor of New York. He was the youngest attorney general of New York. He was never supposed to be president. The powers that be put him into the, into that position so that he wouldn't uh, get a second term as governor of New York. So they made him the vice president, which is a useless position back then. Um, but the crazy things that he did, um, A, he, he changed our language. So when you think of the reason why uh, British spell plow, P-L-O-U-G-H, or color, C-O-L-U-R, and we spell it the way we spell P-L-O-W, that's because of him. He, re- he, he changed uh, over 100 words in his term, and he did it for a practical reason. Back then, when you were running a newspaper, you know, every little letter mattered because you were laying down the print and everybody had to do that. So he called it like the Language Simplification Act, and he took all these words and he shortened them so people would spend less time um, putting together newspapers and printing newspapers. So that's it's it's crazy the kind of things that, that's that, a good that one. he did. I, that one I did yeah. not know. Yeah. That's great. Well, for for more facts, tune in to Rob's LinkedIn page, <laughs> which we will have tagged in the show notes and uh, find more uh, tips, you know, on your content page. And, and go to Boxwater is better. I mean, you and I touched on on one tenth of the kind of information. Yeah. There's a lot of and good again, content we, there. You've got some good we, content. We try to keep that information fun and bite sized. It's not like reading, you know, an encyclopedia. Uh, but there's a ton of information out there that you can you can look at that is very informative. Well, thank you for being here today. It's been it's been fantastic, Matt. As always, you're bringing the goods in lifestyle. I only bring you the best people. That's it. That's it. So for all of you out there who know Matt and you've not been on the show, what does that say? Call him up. Yeah. BlazePR.com. That's it. Come to the website. (laughs) Blaze PR has been a wonder, wonder child for us. So you guys have done phenomenal for us. So I recommend you to anybody. Well, thank you guys both for being here and uh, be sure to check out Box Water online. You can get it at CVS and more to come. Thank you both guys. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tony.